Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of the Daily Crypto News. And now the question of today is, what time is it for you guys right now? And at what time are you watching this? Is it like 6 a.m. or 6 p.m.? Let us know in the comment section down below because since it's different for everybody, it's going to be really interesting to see all those answers. Now, first article of today, 12 reasons to buy Bitcoin in 2020. Investing is a serious endeavor that requires comprehensive research, experience, and reasons behind each decision. I think we could all agree with that. Popular cryptocurrency proponent Brand Quintum recently decided to list 12 reasons that people should buy Bitcoin. And of course, whenever we're listing, I guess, doing a list about Bitcoin, yeah, you know, it, it kind of talks about XRP in the process. There's kind of no circumventing it. it. Talks about Ethereum in the process and quite a lot of other coins as well that are in the top right now. Just because, well, if Bitcoin's going to go up, those coins are going to be going up. And for all that Bitcoin can, a lot of these coins can do the same. And by the way, if you are enjoying the daily crypto news, please support the channel by pressing the like button and subscribing. Because still, 63% of y'all are not subscribed. And really, it helps me out so much, it puts a smile on my face. So press it. Performance, Chaos, Curiosity. Quentin first outlined Bitcoin's past performance. More specifically, he referred to the last decade where the primary crypto became the best performing asset. Bitcoin marked ROI of nearly 8.9 million percent, which is considerably more than every other asset. Although the new decade began merely months ago, Bitcoin is already outperforming the S&P 500 gold or S&P 500 gold and government bonds again with 30% year-to-date returns. For the second reason, the analyst noted that Bitcoin thrived on uncertainty and chaos. At least we expect that. It's not kind of proven as I explained to you guys yesterday, the correlation, the very 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 clear correlation between Bitcoin and stocks right now would actually suggest that Bitcoin does not thrive for uncertainty and chaos or on it. But in reality, what it was designed to do does. And referring to the chaotic 2020, uh, Bitcoin was born for all of this, for all this tension and the wildfires and everything. The primary crypto came into existence during a massive financial crisis or kind of just after it or yeah, I guess in the middle, you could say. And while it has experienced lots of turbulence in those years and during the mentioned above chaotic events, it has survived and continues strong. So that's again a good point to make here. Crypto, whatever it comes to mind, except for a big technological you know, crash where maybe the internet stops or computers massively explode or something like that, it's not going to go away. You know, crypto is here to stay and it's almost impossible to think of good reasons why it would stop existing or why people would you know, get rid of it. One of the things I noted is that what would happen if, you know, for example, the U.S., United States of America decided to buy, I don't know, like a trillion dollars worth of equipment and start to mine Bitcoin heavier than the rest. They invested heavily into it. You guys get me? You know, the government official operation. I'm kind of wondering what would happen then, but also I kind of don't because I don't think it will happen. But you guys need to let me know about that as well. What would happen if the U.S. put all their force, you know, all their power into mining Bitcoin, all of it, you know, such huge amounts of money, such new technology that can mine it better. What would happen? Let me know in the comment section down below. The primary crypto came into existence during that time. Yes, Quintum continued with Bitcoin is fun. And you're a little curious. And he mentioned it's revolutionary technology that's changing the world. And this should also urge people to consider a small Bitcoin investment. For his fourth and fifth, he touched upon recognition coming from the outside world. He cited U.S. Congressman Patrick McHenry, who said that last year, there's absolutely no capacity to kill Bitcoin. As I've explained before, it's kind of impossible at this point. Then there's also the so-called smart money. And he brought up several of such investors that have been quite supportive of the largest crypto by market cap. Popular guy Paul Tudor Jones, a hedge fund manager we've talked about before, recently said that he's buying Bitcoin to fight the rising threat of increasing inflation rates, and again, against this QE as well, quantitative easing. And social capital founder Chamath opposed Warren Buffett's rather adverse perception of Bitcoin and urged people to invest at least 1% in the asset, which again, we explained before. Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey has also demonstrated his appeal to Bitcoin previously. Moreover, 
His personal Twitter profile has only one word written in the description fields, and it reads Bitcoin. So maybe that's why, you know, Twitter has all these crypto scams. It's just the CEO in there trying to trying to get some extra coins. He's just got all those bots turned on right now to steal people's crypto. I see you, Jack Dorsey. I see you. Quinnum also said that Bitcoin is the most fair money as it enables equality of opportunity, referring to the decentralized nature of Bitcoin, where no central authority operates nor makes any decisions. He noted, everyone can participate in the same monetary system. Let's end government money discrimination against the poor, minorities, elderly, and helpless. Now, free speech, scarcity, and the Roman Empire. Free speech underpins a free and open society because Bitcoin is money and money is speech. Don't like watching governments and central banks bailing out their buddies while Main Street suffers? Vote with your dollar. Buy Bitcoin, urged Quidem. While free speech and Bitcoin may not be linked directly, a recent feud between President Donald Trump and Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey highlighted Bitcoin's decentralized nature once again. Reason number eight goes out to scarcity, which is the one primary trait of Bitcoin that I guess helps with this effect. Only 21 million coins will ever exist, and roughly every four years a halving takes place, slashing in half the new creation of Bitcoin, which ultimately slows down the process of new generation, making it even more scarce. As such, Bitcoin is frequently compared to another asset with a limited supply, which of course is gold. However, while no one really knows how much of the precious metal exists, Bitcoin's maximum cap is actually very known. And thus, it could be that a Bitcoin in the, the later stages of, of, I guess, gold accumulation is going to be even a lot more scarce than gold is. It's kind of possible. I don't know how we would measure that, though. I really actually don't know. But yeah. Just like the Roman Empire, the US dollar hegemony. hegemony how, how do you pronounce that, guys? Let me know in the comments down below if you know it. I uh, didn't see that word before. And my English is not perfect because, again, I speak Dutch. So sorry for you won't last forever reads reason number nine by digging into history quidam pointed out that the monetary base changes periodically and bitcoin has a real chance of being the next monetary base although the chances of this seeming rather far-fetched at the moment if it need occurs bitcoin's market position and probably price will skyrocket and all those things actually are quite quite true for other coins like xrp and ethereum as well Next, Quidem distinguishes the limited supply of Bitcoin and the entirely unlimited capabilities of central governments to print as such uh, money as they decide to do so. I see, wait, let me, let me just quickly reread that. Quidem distinguishes the limited supply of Bitcoin and the entirely unlimited capabilities of central governments to print as much money as they decide to, as seen lately. So this point talks about the quantitative easing, which we had a very big uh, talk about yesterday. And the CV9, you know, CV19 caused numerous economic shocks worldwide. To fight the plunging markets, governments fired up their printing machines. And the U.S. Fed, for example, printed trillions of dollars. And while the initial results you know, were not even that bad, at least it kind of looks like, it could have some very, very big long-term consequences. And prominent American economist Peter Schiff recently warned that these excessive amounts could put the U.S. into a hyperinflation state. And for the 11 reasons to buy Bitcoin... He reached out to science to state, Bitcoin mimics an evolutionary strategy that's been working for over 1 billion years. Decentralized networked intelligence. Commonly observed in mycelium, neurons, the internet, and now Bitcoin, Bitcoin is Lindy. And to conclude, he writes that good money matters, as he explains that money is foundational technology, enabling humans to organize in a complex society. It enables specialization and trade, which increases wealth for everyone, and this is the, 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 this, uh, this he adds that Bitcoin is the best money we've ever had. Well, one thing I should add to that is that this whole um, pay ID system that we have going on for Ripple, at least from Ripple, is actually aiding to all of this quite uh, quite a good bit. Because a couple of the reasons actually fall back to it being very useful money, right? And being very useful and decentralized to pay with or to utilize to a certain degree. 
And now, one of the issues I would say that there still is for, for Bitcoin right now is that it's still very, very difficult to buy, very, very difficult to control and understand for a newbie. You know, for somebody like, for example, maybe your mother, your grandmother, your sibling, a lot of them will most likely not understand how you're supposed to buy one of those coins. I, I want to bet money on that, that really, most people you talk to will not know how to buy Bitcoin. That's just kind of given. And then... It could be a good reason to invest in it, but really, it's, it's investing for the sake of, uh, you know, it becoming worth more. It's not investing because they want to use Bitcoin. They just want to hold it and get the price rise. And one thing I think that Pay ID, uh, Ripple's initiative, or at least you know the combined effort, really, really helps with is to make sure that these payments and, and really crypto can also really be used by the masses and to really be used by everybody and to actually have more of a role than just being a safe haven or an asset that you can invest in really to use it as money you know to to make sure that it gets put to right use and to reduce in general and that's what i like ripple for so freaking much xrp ltc bitcoin sv to leave top 10 as DeFi assets rise analyst xiao wang so this is pretty popular. Uh, a lot of people talk to me about this part. And what it basically is about is that DeFi is becoming a pretty big deal nowadays. I mean, we've talked about that for a little while. Uh, yesterday and the day before, how DeFi has been growing in the recent couple of years. But they're also kind of stating that some coins like XRP, Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin SV, Litecoin will all leave the top 10 because DeFi kind of supported coins like Ethereum, uh, EOS, ADA, they'll take over. They'll take it over all, or they'll take it all over. And, um, you know, a lot of those coins that are a little bit lower on will also fall from all of this. Now, personally, I'm not concerned the single peeny tiniest bit. Uh, and again, the, the same goes for Ethereum Classic, Dash, IOTA, VeChain. Well, actually, mostly just Ethereum Classic. Those other ones, yeah, they, 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 they count, but I wouldn't really count them, actually. Um... Yeah, a lot of a lot of people will will state that these coins are going to be taken over, and um, our elite club of coins is not going to be the elite club anymore for long. But again, I don't attach value to all of that. DeFi, I mean, it's important, but I don't know if it will really, really determine the crypto rankings all like that because it's just one of the things that's important, right? And again, maybe there's more DeFi uh, coins in this thing. I don't really care. I really, I really don't. So you know, if you find one, just Type it down below, maybe. I don't I, I, I don't care. All right. A couple guys on Twitter today went back to a couple of predictions from a year ago and, and some analysis and whatnot. And here, XRP MM says, XRP, not $10, not $100, not $1,000. XRP fixed price, $10,000. And then a little bit of a gif that says, agreed. And um, a lot of people are, are, are with the same kind of prediction or the same type of... Yeah, future outlook for XRP. Now, personally, I'm not going to tell you guys it is impossible. I'm going to say it's very far away slash improbable. Why is that? Well, just a little bit of common sense. For the coin to go to $10,000, it's a pretty big hurdle. It's a pretty big jump. It's a pretty long way it has to go for people to put so much money into it. And I guess it only applies if you also believe in the XRP new you know standard currency and, and things like that. So... There's a couple of things you got to believe to really also believe the 10k price prediction. But why are people all of a sudden talking about it again? Well, let's look at a couple of things like, for example, uh, this tweet right here by XRP Yo-Yo. Labs co-founder Arthur Brito provides a tantalizing clue. In 2017, he wrote, XRP must be scalable to accommodate 7.5 billion people. And a little bit later, a Medium article was... Whoa, the freaking jets turn on or something in the backyard here i don't even know what's that but xrp was designed for ten thousand dollars the evidence is in its design and if you scroll down a little bit you'll see that basically what they're stating is it's supposed to be able to work for 7.5 billion people again it must be scalable for all of that and first let's examine some of the main features of xrp that support my claim that it was designed for ten thousand dollars okay so liquidity Liquidity describes the degree to which an asset or security can be quickly bought or sold on the market without affecting the asset's price. 
Now, I would also state that the higher the price of XRP is, the better that this, of course, would be. Again, higher prices equal higher liquidity, and yeah, that, that's a pretty big fact. Second part, possibly, is that uh, Ripple owns a frick ton of XRP. With a higher price, they actually have a lot more money to spend on ecosystem, which could, again, in the end, also result to higher XRP prices and higher um, end or maximum utility in the end. Some other things that are also said down below here is that if the entire 1.14 quadrillion value of all asset classes was tokenized via XRP, that would require at least $11,400 per XRP. And this is likely to happen, but it demonstrates the scale of liquidity that XRP is designed to handle. And again, that's where I seem to disagree, because when we're talking about XRP prices, right, and determining what it is designed to do and what it is kind of, you know, should, should be capable of, you can't tell me that there needs to be more money to be able to transact anything. Because really, all you need is, for example, XRP at $10, and you're good to transact trillions of dollars a day. Because keep in mind, one transaction takes three seconds. So if XRP were to be at you know $10, a million coins would be $10 million, but 100 million coins would be a billion dollars. For example, if somebody has 100 million coins, which is definitely possible, a billion dollars, and that can be done every three seconds. So you just do the math there, 20 times in a minute, uh, you know, 60 in an hour, and then times 24 of that. You'll notice we're talking about a lot of trillions of dollars that um, you know we'll be able to fit inside one day with just 100 million XRP, and I mean there's 100 billion, so I don't I don't really think it's going to be any little bit of an issue. So if it, if, it, if it's a 10,000, you can just support a lot more in a couple seconds, but in the end, the, if the money wants to be transferred, it will be able to do so, and the only the only difference might be how or what type of price you receive for it because even though those transactions take only three seconds and there's no net uh, decrease or increase in demand there is a certain price that you have to pay and if the order books are not big enough yeah that would be kind of interesting to be completely fair with you and a little bit down below here again they kind of talk about the same type of stuff um, it's designed to be you know easily divisible and you know so, so everybody can just accept it easily with 0 0.1 us dollars being the minimum even at ten thousand dollars per coin the transaction cost would still be approximately uh, 10 us dollar cents because there's a certain minimum it's all kind of good yada 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 a couple other points here but in the end there's no real good reason why it needs to be ten thousand dollars but in his opinion, there is a couple of reasons why it, it kind of would be better um, at those higher prices. And as we know, wait, let me just make sure you get one fact straight. XRP would work better at higher prices. That's a fact. The question, however, remains, is $10,000 per coin something that can realistically happen? And is it really designed for all of that? I disagree on both of them. I, I don't really think it's going to happen anytime soon at all. And if it were to happen, we're talking at least 10 plus years, maybe even 30 years. Uh, but that's just my personal opinion. And was it designed for $10,000 per coin? I don't think so. I think it was designed for higher values because that would work a lot better. But, and I, I know for a fact it would work better. And uh, I, I don't know if that was the design though. I don't know. I don't know if I, if I can say that with certainty either. So yeah, that's just my little two cents on it all. If you guys think it will absorb the $1.1 quadrillion market, then yeah, I guess $11,000 per XRP is in it for you. But here in the summary, he also states, the obvious question that any XP holder asks is, will it get that high? He says, I sure hope so, but there's no guarantee. And if it happens, I don't think it will be in the next five years, which is something to take into account as well. Brave Browser caught redirecting earls for cash basically what they did is if you typed in binance into your browser and you pressed enter on the automatically generated link right the the, the fill in link at the top it automatically sent you to a referral page from binance that supported brave and the same thing happened with coinbase and a couple of other things and it was seen in their github so people you know they, they found it out for sure and uh, the ceo of of, of brave decided to say like, oh, sorry, it's a mistake. It's an option. It, it's we were supposed to have it. Oh, stupid us. We'll, we'll, we'll just default it to off and you can turn it on if you want to, you know? Stupid from our, our part. 
We didn't want to do that. But a lot of people lost their faith in Bray because, well, that's just a very shitty move, right? To make money on people's backs like that by automatically fitting them into referral um, links. I don't like that at all. And a lot of people were also just quitting just instantly right now because, well, it's, it's a pretty big thing to do. You're just thinking you're going to go to the official website and they change the link to something which you didn't want it to change to. That t- kind of takes away from the legitimacy, right? If they can change it up like that. And John McAfee does not invest in crypto. He reveals he just uses them. And he only uses two coins, which are DAI and Monero. But yeah, I mean, John McAfee fell off a little bit with his crypto presence because, I mean, he's not a pump and dump master anymore. He also decided to stop promoting cryptos and thus, I guess, his legitimacy and his authority kind of fall away. But guys, that was it for this video. Hopefully you all enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you press the like button and subscribe. And I'll see you guys again in another crypto video. Take care, everybody.